Hi and welcome to the PowerEgg YouTube channel. In this video we're going to talk about real-time intelligence in Microsoft Fabric, what used to be called real-time analytics. Have you ever wondered what it's like to see your data update in real-time inside a Microsoft Power BI report? Well in this video I'm going to show you an end-to-end -end solution using sample data in Microsoft Fabric, creating a report that updates in real-time in Microsoft Power BI. Thank you for watching, please subscribe. Okay, so straight into Microsoft Fabric. Uh, I'm here at the homepage of Microsoft Fabric. It says here Power BI at the bottom left, but essentially we're inside the Microsoft Fabric environment. Um, what we have to do is create a new workspace to get started, to create the container on, in which we are going to add all our Fabric items. So I'm going to click on workspaces here. You can see I already have some workspaces that I created earlier, but we're going to click on new workspace. This will prompt us for a name and we're going to call this demo real-time intelligence. We can put a description, a domain for governance purposes and an image here. On advance, we can choose what kind of license we want assigned to the workspace, but everything is fine the way it is. So we're going to click apply for the purpose of this demonstration. Right, so we can see here now we are in the demo real-time intelligence workspace. If I drag down here, um, drag this, this, um, this menu down, you can see here I can create task flows, uh, which is a new feature, feature in Microsoft Fabric, but we're not going to get into this. We're just going to create a good old school uh, workspace with some items. All right, so we're going to click on new and more options. And the first thing we need to do is create an event house to have a destination for real-time intelligence data, which is going to be the Custo Query Language Database, which we're going to connect to using Power BI. So let's click on event house and we call this um, sample data. Oh, let's call this demo KQL and yellow taxi because this yellow taxi is going to be the sample data we're going to use. Create. This is going to create the event house and the Custo Query Language database for us. Okay, so there's going to be a pop up on getting started. I don't need any of this. But you can see here at the bottom, we have a Custo Query Language database. And this is all we need. So we can open it up to have a look at it. Um, but that's it. That's, that's all we had to do. We just had to create this so we, that we have a landing destination. We're not going to create a table uh, where we define a schema because we want all of this to be configured from the event stream, which we are going to create now. So you can see here my demo workspace is pinned on the left hand side because I used it recently. So I'm going to click on here and you can see here in my workspace, I have the event stream uh, the event house and the custom query language database inside. So we could also see this inside the real time intelligence hub, which is a new feature part of real time intelligence. So if we click on more, you can see here in the real time hub, I can see all of my streams. Um, but we're not going to do that now. We're going to create the new um, streaming, um, the data stream. So we're going to click on new, more options again, so that we can see the full menu of all the items we can create in Microsoft Fabric. And at the bottom here, we have an event stream, okay? There's a difference between a streaming data flow, which is a Power BI item, and an event stream. There's also a streaming data set. Um, these have been around for a while. We're not going to use this. We're going to use an event stream inside the real-time intelligence section. Okay, so let's click on event stream. Here we're gonna call this ES for event stream, yellow taxi, because we're going to use the sample data for yellow taxi from New York. And we're going to call it demo. We don't need enhanced capabilities because it's just a simple demo of the real-time intelligence function. This will uh, take a few seconds, so it, 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 it will load our, our um, event stream for us, which um, is ready now. And you can see here the data format is already JSON, which is perfect. Um, JavaScript object notation is what is going to be our data um, format for the sample data. So if we click here and we put source name, so we, we, uh, we click new source, we can see here we have sample data. So let me do this again. This was a bit quick. Click new source. We can see here we have um, Azure Internet of Things hub. We have Azure event hubs. Uh, we have a custom app we can, we can attach the event stream to, for example, if you have a, a Kafka or anything like this, but uh, we are going to use sample data, okay? 
So let's click on sample data. Right now we can we can add a source name. We're just gonna call it yellow taxi event stream as a source name. And then we're going to choose the sample data which has a high data rate, yellow taxi. Okay, we don't want reflex compatible because we don't need any um, uh, data changes to be recognized. We just want to stream the data at a high rate. So let's click add. Okay, now we can see here we have the first step, which is the stream. Then we have um, a destination we can add. So if we click here on add destination, we have custom app again. If we want external parties or anything like that, we have a lake house that we can use. We can use reflex as well, but we're going to use the custom query language database that we created inside the event house. And we're going to use direct ingestion because event processing before ingestion, is, we don't need to transform the data. All right. Um, th this is also um, a little bit more complex. We can do some data transformations in real time using this kind of lineage view here or process view, which is really, really nice. Um, but we're not going to use this. We're just going to do a really simple direct ingestion uh, destination, t destination name, yellow taxi demo kql db as the destination name workspace we're going to use demo real-time intelligence workspace and we're going to select the demo kql yellow database that we have created earlier okay so this is the, the why we created the event house earlier with the kql database inside um, because otherwise it doesn't pop up here as a destination in a drop down list. Um, if you don't do the step before, you can go back, create it, and go back here, refresh the page, and you will see it. Either way, I'm going to click Add and Configure. This will take a second as well. All right. And now we have a really cool out of the box. Um, uh, configuration menu for the event stream and we're going to add a new table and this new table is going to could be called yellow oops yellow taxi table okay so this is a custom query language warehouse table and the event stream is already connected for us the data connection name as well advanced filters we don't want any compression at this point and um, we don't need to do any properties, but we do want to define the schema and the data format. So we're going to click next because it's going to preview the data for us and allow us um, to see here on the top right, the format. So it's gonna recognize the format for us automatically. So this is all out of the box. Um, so amazing SaaS solution uh, uh, capabilities here. We don't need to write any code for this. Um, it's all no code. And we can here edit the columns. So let's click on edit columns. And then you can see we can change the type of data. So we can change from long um, uh, to integer if you want, or to a real type, type format. Um, you can see here the passenger count is, is real. Okay, so if I want the passenger count to, to be an integer, we can do that. And the mapping transformation is what if, if you're mapping it to anywhere, um, to transforming it to any any um, mapping destination, we can change that here, but that's fine. We can see here the sample data, what it looks like. Okay, so what, what I just changed to integer here is the passenger count. That's fine. We can do trip distance. We can change it to integer uh, rate idea. We're going to keep it as, as a real number in, in case it's, it's long. And um, yeah, we have the long data format for ID. So maybe we, we choose long here as well. And yeah, anything like that you want to change. Um, absolutely super user friendly and quick. We can either even add a custom column if we want, but um, we're not going to do that. All right, we're going to click apply because um, this is just a, a uh, sample data demo. You can see here, there's a passenger count, it's, it's still blank, um, but it's going to, uh, yeah, some, some data sets don't have any data uh, for this. Not every, not every um, thing that we get from the sample data is, is, um, is not blank. So that's uh, a bit of a shame, but it's fine. So we're going to click finish to load the data. It's gonna create the data connection 
and then it's going to stream our data in real time. So we are done now. We have created the data connection. We can click close, right? We can see here there is an error. So let's click on view details. And it reloaded, but it seemed to be fine now. So destination saved, which is fine. Uh, so this is all good. Uh, if we go back here on the left hand side, you can see the demo for real time uh, in the workspace. You can see here now that we have the event stream um, also running. And if we go back, you can see here also the connection in the um, in the event house. If we go back to the Custo Query Language database, so we click directly on it, you can see here we have the table, um, the yellow taxi table. And you can see here the all the data types um, that we have. We can see here that the ones that we transform to integer and there is no data yet. Um, but if we refresh this uh, a couple of times in a few seconds, there will be data coming in. OK, so this is now slowly starting to fill up with data. So I refreshed it and you can see here, OK, we got our first 1700 rows and it's going to compress our data. Um, we can. So the Custo Query Language data sits on top of the uh, one lake. And it's not natively made available in one lake as Delta. Uh, so we can change this as well. And the way we do this is we go here on one lake availability. We can change this to active and it now will the data will be available in one lake as Delta um, Delta Parquet format um, in real time, of course. OK, so this is great. All right. So let's go to Power BI Desktop now to create the connection. Right, so I'm here now in the latest version of Power BI Desktop and uh, I have a blank report. You can see here we have the new DAX query view. Um, we have the model view on the left hand side, these four, four logos icons, but we also have the table view and the report view. I'm right now in the report view and I'm going to click on get data to connect to the data source we just created, which is the KQL database. And we're going to click on more to get the full menu. Then on the left hand side, we have Microsoft Fabric as an option and we have Custo Query Language Databases. So we're going to click on there, click Connect. And now we can choose the demo KQL Yellow Taxi. We're going to click Connect again. And I'm already signed in, so we can see the connection here. I'm going to click on the table. We can check out the table, see some data. We can see we have some null values. Um, but everything else looks fine. We're going to click load. Normally we click on transform data, but um, in this case, it's just real time data. We're not going to do any transformations. Uh, we could do some daytime transformations, but um, yeah, for the real time data, we want to keep it as light as possible. And we're going to use direct query. Okay. If I use import, it doesn't make sense because it's not going to be in real time. I'm going to use direct query so that I get the information directly from the database. Okay, so this should now in the data pane create the all the fields for us inside the table so we can expand this. We can see here we have all the fields. And um, yeah, so right now we need to do uh, one more thing. We're going to click on view and uh, on the format pane if we click on the format pane twice it opens up we can also do it here on the right using the new layout from microsoft power bi um, but uh, yeah i just open it here so we can see the format and we're going to click on page refresh yes and then we can here click on auto page refresh but we can also click on change detection which detects if anything changes. So we're going to click on change detection because um, I want uh, uh, the data to update every time um, there is a new ID uh, count. So we're going to uh, open this up. We're going to create new and we're going to click on count, not distinct. And we're going to check this every second. Yeah, so we want this in absolute real time. And now we just need the ID. Um, so let me have a look which one it is. Uh, rate code ID, uh, 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 vendor ID. Okay, so every time there's a new vendor ID, we can see here we have the sum by default. Um, 
which is bad. So let me just click cancel here and change this. So we do have to do one transformation. You can see here this is whole number, but the summarization is count. Um, we want don't summarize, all right? So the vendor ID right now is not going to summarize. And now we're going to click on change, uh, change detection again. Click on count. Uh, change this to seconds, to one second. And then go to vendor ID, okay? So right now we have the count on the vendor ID. I don't want to count it uh, on the count. That would be bad. Right, so you can see now here it created a, a measure for us, um, which is going to detect the changes. And we have the page refresh for every second. So if we open a visualization, so let's just use a classic card, not the new card, um, because we're not going to do any design stuff. Um, oh yeah, one more thing that we can do here is if we click inside the blank page and we go on page information and we go on canvas settings we can change the size because this is going to be a, a lot of data and um, I want uh, a higher resolution um, so I'm gonna use a higher one that I like to do this so there's a better data density available for us because um, yeah the font change has some limitations and we can see here the vendor ID. We're going to click on here. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let's delete this. We're going to click here on vendor ID. We want this and this is going to create a count for us. All right. And this should pretty much update every second. Um, but let's create an additional um, an additional line chart. OK, you can see now the data updated. Uh, so it's doing a, a change detection every second and here we can see um, the vendor ID so we have a count of the vendor ID um, let's put it on the y-axis and on the x-axis um, I don't know let's put some trip distance for example we can do that it doesn't really matter uh, trip distance right will uh, take a while to load because there's a lot of data information um, okay so that didn't work so I have to <laughs> I had to remove the uh, x-axis for trip distance I'm going to add a fair amount the sum of the fair amount to the x-axis so let's do this again okay now we can see some data and uh, of course like if you want to format this uh, make the line a little bit uh, thinner uh, change the color, add a zoom slider, um, anything like that. That's totally up to you. Um, it, it's for the purpose of this demonstration, all I wanted to show is that the data updates in real time. And you can see here on the top right that it's doing so. All right, so we have here the count of the vendor um, ID, uh, which is, is counting up. So we're seeing the data change in real time. And we can also see here that this is going to increase the count um, every time it detects a change in the data. So the next step we could do is to actually publish this report, which would be part of a normal process um, for reporting purposes. Uh, this is, of course, this report is not uh, made pretty or anything like that, but let's just publish it and see what it looks like in the Power BI service. Okay, so let's click on publish in the home ribbon on the home menu at the top right. I'm going to choose the workspace real time intelligence demo. And that's going to publish. It will take a second. Okay, it is published. Um, so I'm going to click on got it. Go back to the Microsoft. Um, fabric service I suppose or the Microsoft Power BI service we're going to click on workspace real-time intelligence here to go to the workspace and we can see here that we now have the semantic model but also the report so let's click on the report and open it to see if it updates in real time and we can see here we have an exception error okay and the error is because I have the data source credentials um, not set up when I uh, after I published it it didn't take them automatically so I have to do this manually so give me one second I will do this okay we now have our credentials I have to click on edit credentials so let me go back and refresh this page and it should be fine we're going to 
click on the real-time intelligence um, workspace again go to the yellow taxi report and I think right now we shouldn't see an error yes so right now it's fine um, so after I published it I had to um, update my credentials manually again so make sure you check this before you pub after you publish the report um, yeah but right now there should be a change this detection every second um, so let's see just for one second yes we can see the data is updating right so if you have a look at the top right here you can see that the count is continually going up okay so that's it for the real-time intelligence demo in Microsoft Fabric I hope you enjoyed it try it yourself it is very nice to see the data update in real time of course you can do more fancy visualizations or anything like that to see any data changes, I just created a card to see the data count up, um, but it was enough to prove the concept that real time is working and to see the data update in real time using sample data. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe for more.